Hey everyone, how's it going? So thanks for coming along to this Planet Coaster Top Tips for Realism lesson and this is Unlucky for Some, it's number 13. And this week we are looking at building tips that both console and desktop players can use. So for this one, just know that you can swap out all of the in-game pieces with Theme Maker's Toolkit stuff. Let's get started. So we're all pretty familiar with how the building pieces work in Planet Coaster already, right? So you go to your building tab, you select your wall, you place it down, and it creates a grid for you. That grid is on a 90 degree axis and you can place them with relative freedom as long as you use the 90 degrees. But you may want to start taking control over your buildings because remember when you're building for realism, not every building is square. Every building will have different permutations and different things that it will have. So I like to take control to start with by removing my grid size and taking it down to one meter. That way, I now have still the 90 degree grid to work with, but I've now got a lot more flexibility and freedom to place things where I want it to be. So, this now starts to create a little bit of depth with the building that I'm going to create. And that's all good and well if you want to stay on the grid. But what happens if you want to start to experiment with curved walls? Well, that's relatively easy to do as well. All I do is I take a building piece and I duplicate it. That's Control D on the keyboard, and then I place it wherever. Now, I need to reselect it and remove it from the building. This creates a completely separate building, but I now have complete rotation freedom if I use the advanced move. So I can now start to create some curved walls from it, which is awesome. So if I then place this here, I can then select this again. And again, I can use control D or I can use control X on the keyboard and then I can copy it and it creates another new building. Now, just as a word of warning, because this is creating a new building, it does create a little bit more strain on your game than if you were to stick to the grid, but you have curved walls, so it's worth the trade-off. Now, these pieces are not the only things that you have to use. If you want to completely regain freedom with the walls, then scrap the idea of using walls, because you would have heard us talking about this forever. Windows as walls. So, you have a whole palette of windows that are available to you in the building tools that can be turned around and used as walls. So, for example, if I take this one here uh, and I spin it around, the back end of the texture gives me a nice texture to use. So, I could, if I wanted to, repeat this a bunch of times and I create a wall. Doesn't look that great, but I can create a wall from it. Or you can use things uh, like the wood. You've seen me do this in the, uh, in the other episodes when I did the station and I did the maintenance area, but you can see already that the window has a back to it. This is probably really bad lighting. Let's just go this way. So it has a back to it. So I can put, place it down and then I can flip it round and I can move it back and place it down and suddenly I have a wall. Now this wall is not only much thinner than the four meter walls that you get given in game, you now have complete freedom. So I can batch this together and not only do I have my ground axis where I can spin it round, I can also rotate it in all directions. So I can now start to create some awesome shaped buildings because I now have complete freedom. Other windows that you could potentially use are things like the abandoned haunted, haunted house. So if I flip this one round, you can see that I have a, an almost a, a concrete metal uh, style that I can start using. Uh, or another one that I could use, if I just copy this for a second, uh, is this one, the fairy tale. I use this quite a lot when I'm doing decor, so I may uh, place it this way and then I may place a flower or something on top. So let's just choose one at random. Uh, let's go for that one. Might place a flower on top. So now you have a nice little uh, a nice little flower bed that you started to build. Another window that I could use uh, is this one here, the wooden window. Again, flip it round. And I have another really awesome wood looking uh, effect of a wall. So I can start placing it this way and up this way. Now the beauty of using windows as walls is you can now start to do offset windows. So as you already know that when you're placing windows on buildings you have to sort of slap them on the front and hope for the best. 
But doing it this way, you now have freedom of the wall. And if you so wanted to, you're not attached to the outside of the wall anymore. You can bring it back in and you can sink it in. And now you're starting to, albeit bad, very badly. Let's do a different window. Uh, let's go this one. Uh, just flip this round. There we go. So you now have control over your windows and you can now have inset windows. Now, there is another trick that you can use if you don't want to use windows as walls or you can't find one that works for you. You have an entire set of panels available to you. So if I search for panel, um, depending on the DLCs and depending on what's been released for you, whether you've just got spooky, there's st stuff in there for spooky, um, or whether you've got the full range, so like Ghostbusters, for example, has the city set. Um, there's loads that you could use. Adventure has got some that you can use as well. But you can start creating walls using panels. Now, I've done this in Fundy and Raygate Lake quite a lot. So all you do is you align it to a, a, an existing wall. And you just move it back. And you just start placing. And then all I do to make it double sided so I've got control over either side of the wall. Is just place two. And then all I need to do is group them together and place them down. And so now you've got complete freedom over where your walls are going to be. So they're, they're, your, they're your main tips. You can either use different building grids if that's what you want to do. You can use windows as walls or you can use panels. So let's move on. So here's something that I've just thrown down with very little care, but just to demonstrate just how it works. And I've used with this one a mix of the in-game building pieces, the panels as walls, and also windows as walls. But I've also used the, the same wooden barn door that we've used uh, elsewhere just as a wall as well, because that also works quite nicely, right? So uh, you can see on here then that I've got the inside panel walls, I've got the outside barn door, and I've now got the ability to control how my interior and my exterior looks. Now remember, if you're not bothered about doing interiors, then you don't need to worry about all this level of detail. It's, that's absolutely perfectly fine. You can build just as realistic theme parks if you don't do the interiors of your buildings as much as you do if you do do the interiors. It's just when you look through the theme park, you get a little bit more immersive if you do make the effort to do the interiors, but you know what? It's no biggie if you don't want to do it. Just don't do it. So, I've also then used the in-game walls just to do some of the interiors as well but I'm left with this thing here like I don't want to create a shed I don't want to be have it boxed in or anything I want windows but do you know what the windows for this that we that I want in here they're just not very good in game this one's not see-through the ones that are just aren't big enough what do I do well guess what you create your own it's really easy to do all you need to do is take a building, go to your building pieces, find your beams, beams, uh, and use the uh, the in-game ones. So here I'm, I've already started using the haunted house set, the spooky pack set. So I'm just going to continue using that. I've used the thick beam here. Um, I've got my align to surface on, and I've also got angle snap on. And I just come back here. I go to my advanced uh, advanced move, and I start to plan out where I want my window frame to be. Um, I'm just going to take a moment to put this into the building like that so it's a little bit easier to edit um, and then I'm going to take my uh, my other vertical beam I'm going to copy it across and I'm going to put that there and then I'm going to know in uh, roughly in the middle there's going to be another one there right um, so I know I'm starting to plan out where my windows are going to go and then once I'm ready I can find go back to my building tab and find my glass and the game in game provides you with this glass here. You get four by four, you get four by two, two by two, two by one, and one by one. And then I just place my glass in. And I just move it back, move it down, and move it across. Like so. And so that's how I can create my own windows. This also works, as I said, with smaller windows because you get uh, smaller glass panels, and all you do is you just use smaller beams. So the smallest beam that you have in game, uh, I believe, comes down to the western set where you have control over one meter, two meters and four meters. So I'll just show you real quick here. If I go over here, 
uh, one meter and I'm going to move this down to one meter whoops try again to one meter one meter and then copy this one down and I go back and find my glass one meter by one meter and the good job is it disappears which is a good thing because it now means I have a proper window I wonder if I could no it's already black as so I wonder if I could make it darker so I could show you um, but you can see you've got an actual small window and if you're using the technique from the building piece where you're allowing yourself to have space for offset windows this works an absolute treat so let's look at the next tip so by this point you're probably about ready for a roof so the first thing you need to consider is whether you are kitting the inside of the whole building and whether it needs a ceiling if it does need a ceiling and that's what you've decided you're going to need to choose something to use and this is where you can then start using the panels again so remember that you've got an entire array of panels that you can use so you could use this one from uh, the spooky pack if, the, if you wanted and then you just start to place it down and because you're already in the building once you've placed it down you can then select it and you can copy it across now if that doesn't work for you doesn't matter you can choose another panel or you could go completely rogue and start to make your own uh, so you can use a plank for example uh, so you again in the it's the spooky pack that that has the best ones but you have a wooden plank this one's far more time consuming but it gives you freedom oh this one's actually the pirate one uh, but it gives you complete freedom of what you're actually looking at uh, looking at achieving so you can actually design your own ceiling with it right works just as well or if you've got the adventure pack there is an awesome uh, wood scaffolding panel that I like to use for my ceilings. I sometimes use it for floors as well actually. Um, it's this one here. I just choose four by four and I can lay it down. Um, there we go. So I just line it up and go this way and place it down. And I'm, you get the picture right? So you have all sorts that you can use. But even then if that still doesn't work remember you can fall back on your art shapes. Your art shapes are your absolute best friend when you can't find a piece that you like. So in this one, you can just use a rectangle. You can colour it whatever colour you want. You can place it down. And then you can move it in. And remember that your ceiling just only has to go as far as your as far as your window is going to go. So you've probably seen that in Raygate Lake and Fundy Fun Spot, uh, I've used quite a lot of recessed ceiling. It's all quite quite low ceilings because I find that four meters is a little bit too tall in game. Um, but in this instance, I couldn't do that here because my window is too tall. So, and that's fine. But I can just place down my art shape and it does exactly the same thing. You have yourself a ceiling, but you now need a roof. Now, you can absolutely use the roofs that are in game. They are some brilliant ones in there. Uh, you've got the corrugated roof, which has got the detailing on the underside if you're not doing a ceiling. You could use the western, you could use the spooky, but they're not all consistent. You don't get the same pieces with the same bits of roof. So you kind of find yourself a little bit limited to what you can do. And they're at certain angles as well. So you've either got a one meter high one, a two meter, a four meter sometimes you get a six but you might actually want to do something slightly different and that is totally fine go for it so you take yourself a beam and you move it across you can turn your angle snap off and you can go up and now you have complete freedom of the pitch of your roof so I'm just gonna place this like this and because I'm on the building grid I can move it like this I'm also just going to copy this across so I know that I'm working on a line. And now I just need to find something to top it off with. And you guessed it. You can use panels. You can use planks. You can use art shapes. You can use whatever you want. In fact, you can even go one further and start to play trickery. Because there are brackets in game. And you would have seen the likes of Silverette do this. And uh, all of the other big creators 
they use the western brackets and uh, it cut they come out absolutely brilliant just remember this is a piece count hog it's going to absolutely increase the piece count so if you are working on console the oswald counter is not your friend here um and if you're running on a a slower machine a, a, an older machine then this is also going to drag it down but i think you'll agree that the effect that you can achieve from it is just well it's wood shingle like what what else what else do you need uh, from wood, wood shingle just remember that wood shingles are normally placed slightly on top of each other so that the water runs off like so and now you absolutely have creative freedom over your roofs you're not just tied to the ingrid the ingrid pieces um so i'm just going to copy this like this and of course you can get as creative with your roof as you like or you can uh, keep it as basic as you like it's completely up to you but just remember that you have the control you've taken the control back and that's the important thing so what's next so just some more work that i've put in then just to show you how this works and of course look it's it's just a case of copying and pasting the, the pieces that you've done and remember if you're on desktop you can swap these out for theme makers toolkit pieces so if you're still stuck for stuff if you can't find panels and things and the theme makers toolkit stuff is awesome so you can just swap it out and you can find some brilliant things brick and wood and all sorts um so also just to point out that this roof isn't even complete and it's already at a thousand pieces but remember Remember, that's for me worth the price of regaining control of my buildings I'm not stuck to using just the in-game things and because I've regained control this is no longer the right angle for all of the pieces in game so I've just gone along and used the haunted house uh, spooky pack plank that comes in the scenery tab um, and I've just got control because you've got the one meter two meter and four meter planks and also remember if you want to you can put them on a slant so you can make them slatted it's a word, slatted. Uh, so the next thing that you might want to do is build a door. Now we've done windows, so guess what? Doors are exactly the same. So if I just go into my other building, I'm just going to pull in the beam that I had before. I'm just going to rotate it round. I'm going to bring it down and I can build my door frame as I want. Just gonna come back in here and choose my smaller haunted house beam. Bring it up here. That's actually, by the way, sheer luck that that was the right width. <laughs> That's just far too much playing this game. <laughs> and then, so I've got myself a door frame, and I'm gonna come back in, and uh, I'm gonna choose my plank. And now I'm going to sink my plank back in. I'm just going to copy it across and of course if you are going for proper realism you'll need to rotate your plank over and remember to recolor some stuff as well so this is black at the moment I'm just coming to my color picker I'm just going to choose this one because remember not every single plank is going to be the same color so you just want to vary that up a little bit. I'm just going to fill in that gap like that. And then I'm going to copy this down. So there we go. Uh, and then, of course, I need a door handle. So you can find anything in the, in the scenery pieces. If you're not doing the inside and you're not bothered about poke through, um, then I would probably use things like uh, the brackets that you get on... There we go. Uh, for the screens. So I can place this. It's possibly a little bit small for what you're wanting in this in this door. But yes, you can use that kind of idea. And also, talking of this bracket, you can use these for joins in wood. And I love doing this. I absolutely love doing this. This, by the way, is a secret sneaky tip that I didn't even plan. But I'm going to show you anyway. So Because you love secret sneaky tips. Uh, so I've got myself a beam like this and I'm going to put another one here and I've created a cross beam right so I'm I'm at this cross beam but in real life these things would be supported by something you would have some kind of bolts so all I then do is I go in here take my bracket and I just shift it back 
so that it's just pointing out. Now you can see that the arrows here, by the way, are in the way. So sometimes what I need to do is press X and it gets rid of the arrows and you can see that it's placed in the right place. Um, and then press X again and I place one there, one there, one there and one there. Now you saw me do this in Raygate Lake on the bridge um, and also the Tapio Station. So the bridges that the railway runs along and Tapio Station. Um, but I just wanted to bring this into the Top Tips video just in case you haven't seen the series. Um, this is another way that you can that you can do it. But this remember only works if you're using the thicker beams. If you are using the thinner beams uh, the back of the brackets sticks out of the, of the beam. So you're going to need to find a way of hiding that. Totally fine to do it. You'll just need to find to find a way of, of hiding it but that's another thing that uh, that you can do secret sneaky tip so what's next so here you go from here you just start kitting on the outside making sure that you're decorating it with the right theming so you might put some of the western stuff up and then you just put all of your signs up and again it's completely up to you whether you go rogue and you make your own stuff whether you go onto theme makers toolkit and find your own stuff or whether you use the in-game pieces some of them some of the signs are really 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 good but ultimately, you need to start kitting it out. And with this one, I've kind of committed myself to doing an interior, right? Because I've got open frontage and everything. So the next question I then get is how can I create custom benches? Because the, although the in-game ones are awesome, like the western one uh, down here, the wood one, is just really, really good. The pirate one is just lovely detail to it. But it might not fit what you want. You might want to create areas where people are sitting on walls or you might want to create your own custom seating, um, particularly if you want restaurants, you know, like I did in Game of Cones in Fundy Fun Spot. So here's how I do this. The first thing you do is you choose yourself a pretty neutral uh, picnic bench. So this one's probably no good because we've got the wood slats on it. Uh, this, this one tends to work okay, but you've got the little bumps that you're also going to need to account for. So you just need to be aware of that. Or the uh, the adventure one also works pretty nicely. But you just have to deal with this little offshoot. These little offshoots here. But I'm going to use this one just because. Just because. So now you need to find a way or find a style. What do you want this to look like? And again, just like we've done with all of the tips up to now. You won't be surprised to learn that things like art shapes, things like beams, things like planks. They are all your friend in this instance. So for this one, I'm just going to cover it for now with some art shapes. So I'm going to take this extra small cube. I've already got it on angle snap and rotation. And I'm just going to shift it down so it's going to cover the picnic bench. I'm just then going to move this across. And I'm going to colour this black. Like so. Um... What I'm then going to do is just take uh, all of these, put it into a building so it's easier to edit. Because I can then just highlight and copy it all like this. And there you go. I've already created custom seats. Now let's just take, for example, the fact that I want to put um, some kind of plank on the top. Some kind of wood, just to finish it off. So let's do that. Let's keep in consistent style. Let's use the haunted house uh, spooky pack plank. And I can place that on the top like this, like this. Go on, sit, sit there. Yes, she's going to sit down. So there you go. It actually works. <laughs> she's she's sitting on the bench and it looks decent. Um, there we go. I'm just going to do that and do that. Now, just remember, if you are going to do this, you you will get clipping. That's completely unavoidable. Your guests are going to clip through. The decorations that you're that you're creating so you're just gonna have to suck that up i'm afraid um that's just how that's going to work but you just keep going and then you just hide everything that you that you want right so keep it going keep it going you can see that this bit is just ever so slightly creeping through so all i'm going to do is just raise it up um, I've got Zed fighting on this, by the way, because I've not taken particular care. So Zed, fight Zed fighting is where you have two or more textures that are fighting for the same space on your screen. And you can see that it's flickering. Of course, when you stop scrolling, it doesn't actually affect it. But you just need to be aware of that when you're designing. Um, sometimes you just need to deal with it. And sometimes you can deal with it. So, yeah. If I took some more care over this, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get the Zed fighting. But that's how I can create my own custom benches. 
Again, you can use whatever textures and whatever you want from there. But how do you get guests to sit on walls? Well, that's actually easier than people may think. So all you need for this one, using this technique that we did over here, is you just need a seat from your benches area. And you're going to need one of the uh, th these benches, the one that has no back. So a backless one. I like to use uh, the adventure bench again because it's relatively neutral. Um, so you place it down and I think you can probably guess where this is going to be going. So I've just put that in their way and they've just decided to walk away. <laughs> so I'm just going to take a piece of wood and I'm just going to sink it in like so. And now let's say, as we allow the guests to clip through, oh, perfect timing. Our guests are now sitting on our wall. And of course, this does also work with the in-game walls that you can have. So if I get rid of those and I replace it for, let's take the city brick. And I move this down and then like so, like so. And there's a wall. Now, because the bench is a little bit wider than the actual wall itself, what I would then do is come out of the building editor, copy the building, and just move it across. Like that. So now you've got a wall that you can put things like uh, the, the uh, nature behind. So like flower beds. That's the word I'm looking for. Flower beds. Um, there we go. So I can take a flower bed. And I can put that behind like so and I can then also put some flowers in like so let's just take those off put it down again no care taken with placing these down whatsoever it's not this is not meant to be realistic it's just meant to show you how you can do it and what you now have is an area for guests to come and sit on a wall but you just need to make sure that the end of your path uh, can host an actual bench that you can use and then that you're just going to be have to be prepared to clip the end of the path with the wall but I think you'll agree that the result speaks for itself right it just creates this ability for guests to come and sit on the on your wall and of course you're not going to be placing it in in the center so got one more tip for you what do you reckon it's going to be Ah uh, yes, the gazebo. The one thing that you get asked the most about. How do you create effective gazebos in the game? Well, like this. Here's a couple that I made earlier. These are all varying different degrees of complexity. They were all using different things within the within the game. Um, like for example, this one is a combination of building pieces and uh, art shapes. This one is a bit more geometric. It's just a load of beams um, not very weatherproof but it's just a load of beams this one's a bit prettier it's designed for teacups so it's black and white and it's got a bit of bunting on it you would have seen this one in colwell wonderland uh, this is the first one i ever did and it was very bold geometric park that i was building and i wanted it to stand out at the front of the park so this is my first time i started to use art shapes and uh, combining it with buildings and stuff and then this one i used in a scenario i created called vista view um, when i was actually playing it myself again not very weatherproof because you've got a massive hole in the top but uh, it's a very western enthused one but you can see they all use the same technique they are all built using the same way so how do i do it well, the first thing you're going to need is something to put around or to put it around. So I'm going to choose a ride at random. It could be the teacups. It could be um, the chair plane, I guess. It could be the Corollis or whatever. I'm going to choose the Grand Carousel. Um, it seems relatively big, right? So the next thing I'm going to need to do then is go into the building. I'm going to choose a column. And I'm going to choose one that's on the grid. That bit is really, really important. Make sure it's on the grid. Now... I need to try and find the centre of the carousel somehow, and I've only got four metres. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to place too high straight away. I'm going to come out of the building and I'm going to move using the advanced tool so I can place it right in the centre. Now this bit's also important because you have to get the, the geometric centre of the shape right so you can start building around it. So the next thing I then do is I re-edit, take my grid right down to one metre, highlight everything, and then copy it. I decide then whether I want to include the queue. Um, so if I do, then I need to be a little bit wider. 
But if I don't, I can just come straight out to the outside. So make sure that it is, is that lined up? Make sure that it's lined up to the outside. And now we've got, we're starting to get the basics down. So I know that this is going to have some kind of a slanted roof and you're going to need to almost follow this one here. So I've got two choices. I, I can either make the center slightly higher, um, which I would recommend doing, or uh, actually, I'm going to just copy another piece. Um, or I can make this front bit lower. Completely up to you. Again, it's your, it's your park, you design. But I'm just going to bring it up ever so slightly. I'm now going to take another off-grid beam. So, as we've been using the haunted house pillar for this whole time. Uh, no, do you know what? Let's use the thicker one. Uh, let's go for this one, right? Uh, and so, I'm then going to line it up and I now need to place this down but I'm then going to rotate it up like so so that it now covers the top so what you've now got is the start of uh, your actual gazebo so for now we can get rid of our ride because we don't need it anymore and now comes the magic so you're going to edit it Highlight everything, copy it, and then paste it. But be very careful in case you haven't already noticed, you've just pasted a load of beams uh, or columns or whatever you're using into this centerpiece. So you just need to get rid of the extra. Uh, not like that though. <laughs> so get rid of the extra. And that the reason being, the more that you copy it, and the more that they sit on the one position, the more of a drain on your resources it's going to be. And it's just a complete waste of pieces. It's a complete waste of piece count. And you end up with a gazebo that's 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 pieces because all, you've got, all you're about to do is, is copy a load of stuff. So what I then do is I come out of the whole building, I copy it, angle snap, rotate it round like that. The other thing, the other way that you could do this if you're wanting to be a little bit more efficient than I'm being is you can do it all in the one building. You can rotate it, bring it back down like so. Now the reason that I like to do one is because sometimes when you do a cross like this, it doesn't rotate on an axis. This one, thankfully, does. But depending on what you've used as your anchoring points, sometimes it rotates slightly wider than off it's so it's like off center it's not actually rotating around the center so that's why i like to just do one they tend to to rotate quite happily so then you just need to decide how um how many steps you want in your uh, in your rotation so you can have it as thorough as this and you can have a more detailed one uh, like that um or you can have it as i've got elsewhere but either way, what you're then going to do from this point is you're, you've now got where your points are going to be meeting all the way around. So you just need to go back in. You can edit this one. And now you can start kitting out the space between here and here. So let me just do this off camera because this is going to take a little bit of time. And then I'll be back in a second. Here we go. So I've kept this really, really simple. I'm glad I didn't do this on camera. This took even 20, 30 minutes to actually do. And this is the simplest form um, but of course you're going to need to create all of the stuff that you want on one section on one piece on one slice whatever you want to call it so for example on uh, this one over here I would have to do all of the beams plus all of this and the decoration and the bunting and everything else like the footers and the pillars and, and everything this all needs to be in place before I do this next step so I've just done this bit really simply to show you so this is now the bit that gets a little bit weird because I need to come back into the ones that I've copied. Whoops, not that one. And delete them all like that. And then I need to come back into this one and you guessed it, delete them. But why? Because all I need to do now is I duplicate it, place it down, duplicate it, place it down, duplicate it, place it down. So just to highlight what I was saying before, I've just done that. And now I've got 32 pieces where there should be three. So I'm just going to delete the middle section. And I'm just going to copy the one where I've got two pieces. Uh, bring my grid back down. 
bring it down again and my grid height copy this back up so it makes it back to three and I think you're probably going to be able to guess where we're going where we're going with this now so I take this piece and I copy it and I rotate it oh no it needs to be on this the angle snap uh, on the angle snap rotate it round and then copy it angle snap and rotate it round so there you go a really basic gazebo now there is a strategic choice that i've made when um putting in these beams i chose a thicker beam so that i can uh, clip all of these panels that i'm using the 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 planks that i'm using in here I've done that deliberately so I don't have to worry so much about unsightly edges. This works just the same as if you're using art shapes like I did over here and beams that I'm using over here or textured things that I've used here. It absolutely works every single way. Um, all you then need to do is just find a way of hiding the top if you're wanting to wanting to go to that, to that extreme. Like I've left it on this one completely open. I wanted to have that beam effect. But over here I've actually just used the, uh, the sci-fi tail I think it is. Uh, is it called tail? The mole tail. Um, yeah, this one. This one here, the mutt tail. I just put the mutt tail on the top. Um, let's just make that not off center. There you go. It just, ooh, hello. It just hides it. I mean, obviously, this doesn't fit the theme and, and everything. You, you, there's loads of stuff you can use. The Christmas baubles work. Uh, some of the candy pieces work. There's loads of things. You know, let your imagination run wild. Theme makers dog it if you're wanting to. Um, but that's the that's the real basics of a gazebo. And now when you bring back your merry-go-round. There we go. You may find that actually this is probably a bit too tall. Um, that's fine. You can then just go ahead and sink it back down um, but remember though because it's on multiple buildings uh, you'll need to select multiple buildings and then bring it back down and also just remember that you still got that center spike so you're probably going to want to find a way of removing the center spike and including some kind of support beams in here so that it's self-supporting remember that triangles are your strongest are your strongest friend and i think i've done that in this one yes in this one so uh, as part of the copying over piece that i've done i've done some support strands in the middle here and i've also just done a support strand up here so you can let your imagination run absolutely wild so guys that brings us to the end of this episode thank you so much for getting to the end if you have found this helpful then you know i always appreciate a like and a comment uh, it absolutely helps us to find so many more new viewers um just to give you an insight we started this in in march the like and the comment thing and traffic to the traffic to the channel is up by 160 percent and i found so many new people um, and i'm so grateful that you've all found everybody so the like and the comment absolutely really really does help um but of course until we speak again fundy fun spot is on sunday i'll see you soon look after yourselves take care bye bye